Hi, my name is Joe Sandra and I'm the founder of Corporate Minority. Hi, my name is Chioma and I'm the brand ambassador of Corporate Minority. So every so often we like to bring on a guest to talk about their field and their industry and give us insight for those who are looking to go in that career path. In doing this, we also uncover hidden professions, those professions that you might not know about. A lot of times when people think of a successful individual, they think of a doctor or a lawyer, but there are so many other professions out there and we try to highlight those professions here. So today we have Emmy Adunze. He's an environmental compliance manager. So an environmental compliance manager is someone who manages all environmental laws and regulations that may pertain to an organization. So this includes obtaining permits or employee training mm -hmm. or involves hazardous materials um, handling and disposal. Hi, well my name is Emmy Adunze, like she almost said, and I've been in the environmental compliance field for going on about eight years now. Um, I currently work for a major freight company and I can honestly tell you it's a growing industry. Something that, you know, I didn't see myself starting off with, but now that I'm here, now that I see all the opportunities, it's something that I can see myself finishing my career with. Nice. So what does a day um, as an environmental compliance manager look like? Well, the awesome thing about environmental compliance is that, honestly, half the day could be spent out in the field and the other half behind a desk. So there's no really definite role that I play in day-to-day -day operation. Um, for the most part, I have to handle, um, like Chioma said, the environmental compliance documentation, so the business plans, monitoring plans, financial responsibilities, items like that. Once I finish up, then I do the audit portion, which is out and about. So I visit facilities, I make sure that if there's anything out of the, or um, out of the ordinary, that, they're, um, that we correct it. Obviously, you set into place better, uh, better management practices, so you want to make sure that all the different facilities are abiding by those practices. Okay, that makes sense. So how did you get involved in this industry? Well, honestly, I can tell you that I started off doing environmental engineering. Um, mm -hmm. As I was studying, I realized that I was more interested in the environmental side of things, not necessarily the engineering side of it, mm -hmm. so I branched off into the environmental science. Once I graduated, I was looking around for different career paths in the environmental science field. Um, I noticed that you can go into medicine, you can go into compliance, like what I ended up in. So one of the things I realized was that when someone says going green, it's not necessarily just saving the environment, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's also going green in terms of dollar bills. Okay. Every major corporation has some sort of environmental compliance department. And I realized that, you know, what better way for me to utilize my environmental science and my other upper division environmental law classes um, or courses than with environmental compliance. So what I did is I reached out, um, started working for a private company that pretty much serviced major corporations. Um, we handled a lot of their environmental compliance issues and I realized this is something that I really wanted to do. Um, so when the opportunity presented itself, uh, I was offered an environmental compliance manager position. I was able to take all the skills I learned as a compliance specialist and I now I utilize it managing a whole program. Nice, nice, nice. I heard you saying that you have to take a couple courses, law classes, science courses. What degree do you actually need to get to start, you know, this role? Well, it just depends. Uh, most uh, employers are looking for someone who has some sort of science background. Okay. Um, so not necessarily, you know, your chemistries and your biologies, but, you know, environmental science is a good one. Um, there are individuals who study um, environmental studies. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen some that do uh, public health. So something that provides transferable skills. That makes sense. And it's just a bachelor's degree or do you need a yeah, certification? Master's or, or? So just like um, other career paths, um, a master's degree is something that if you're gonna be in a management role, you want uh, most employers usually um, recommend or suggest. Um, it's something that is not mandated though. So what is salary compensation like in your field? Like is it very competitive? Like what can someone starting off look for and what could they look towards when they move up the ladder? Yeah, that's a good question. All right, well like I said, I started off as an environmental compliance specialist. Um, usually uh, when you start off, you're making anywhere from 40 to possibly as high as 80K as an environmental compliance specialist. Uh, depending obviously on the company size, depending on the role that you play, uh, you can make more. Um, in terms of, our, of an environmental compliance manager, um, a good range would probably be anywhere from 80 to 150K. I know that's a broad range, but again, like I said, it depends on the company size and obviously what role you're going to play. If you're a regional environmental compliance manager and you have, let's say, three or four states that you're looking over, obviously the pay will, will probably be much more higher than something that you're policing, let's say, just uh, um, a county um, in, a, in a specific state. Okay, that makes sense. So you, you're saying states, cities, are you traveling a lot? You said you're traveling in the beginning, right? Oh, well, definitely a lot of traveling. Okay. Um, uh, 
like I mentioned before, half the job is in the field, mm -hmm. um, half the job is in the office. So the field portion of it, obviously if you're a regional um, environmental compliance manager, you're gonna be visiting all your facilities. Uh, for instance, I'm in charge of a couple of different states. Um, I'm focusing just on California right now, but um, you can imagine how large California is. So, mm -hmm. you know, one day I'm up in Chico, California. The other day I can be out in San Diego. Okay. Um, there's a good amount of traveling. Um, usually you're on site for agency inspection. So if that's taking place, then you, you're hopping on the flight to get out there um, once the agency notifies you of that. So outside of that, you're checking in on your facilities maybe once every month or every other month just to make sure that they're abiding by the, the better management practices that you put into place. This sounds weird, but can you relate it to like a food inspector for a restaurant? Is it similar or is it completely different? Uh, definitely not the same. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> Sounded similar, but I wasn't sure. All right. Look, just wanted to ask that. So then another thing is, what would you advise for somebody who is trying to get in this field? What should they be, what skills should they be trying to acquire right now? Well, in terms of skills, um, a lot of document processing, so you want to make sure that you're someone who is able to sit down and review, uh, you know, a good amount of documents. Mm -hmm. And like I said before, you're talking about business plans, monitoring plans, financial responsibilities, um, and agency inspection reports, mm -hmm. um, training curriculum. So there's a lot of, you know, document review. But outside of that, um, there are HAZWOPER trainings, um, and that's specifically for hazardous materials. Mm -hmm. um, there are, if you wanted to be a um, environmental compliance manager, or if you want to be a, a county or a Cooper regulator, um, one thing is an REHS, which is a registered environmental health specialist. That's mm -hmm. something that can go a long way in the field. Okay. Okay, Peyton, backing off of that question. So if you could go back, huh. um, what would you tell your younger self or just starting off in that career? And what advice would you give to someone who's starting off in your career? Uh, well, I won't make this about specifically environmental compliance. Um, in a management position, um, the advice I would have given myself before would be that, you know, obviously prepare yourself for interacting with several different personalities. Um, obviously everyone tells you, you know, not everybody's the same. It's something that, you know, you inherently know, you know, growing mm -hmm. up in middle school, high school, um, but when you become, uh, or college, sorry, um, also, but when you get on the in a, in a corporate level or when you become a manager, you really have to deal with different personalities. Because it's, um, for example, like me being a young individual who's in the corporate world, you have personalities where they may clash with someone who might be half their age and they've been in the field, you know, some have said longer than I've even been alive. So it's just something that you want to make sure that um, you prepare yourself for dealing with different personalities. So is your field comprised of a diverse group of individuals? More or less, I'd say that we are pretty diverse. Um, uh, there's a lot of women um, environmental compliance manager out, mm. managers out there, um, environmental compliance specialists. Uh, I know for a fact that in previous, uh, in, in, with my previous employer, half of our staffing was actually women. Wow. Um, outside of that, you know, in terms of ethnic diversity, I, I definitely say so. Okay, that's Great. that's really good to that's know good too. To know, yeah. Yeah. Well, this is one of those hidden professions that we believe, you know, a lot of people don't necessarily know about, but it is very profitable. That being said, we're gonna wrap it up here. We're gonna have a new article posted regarding the environmental compliance industry. So make sure you check that out on corporateminority.com. Comment below, let us know if you have any questions. We'll have Emmy here, or that's our, our network, so he can always, you know, we can always forward that question off to him and provide you the answer if you're interested in this field. Don't forget to like and share. As always, we like to end with an inspirational quote. So Sam Levinson said, don't watch the clock, do what it does, keep going. Thank you guys for joining us. Like and subscribe below. And share. Thank, Thank you, Emmy. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks.